Welcome to Hilltop. It's so good to see you guys. I don't normally see you. I'm usually in the dungeon with the, well, the better people, the kids. Uh, as you can tell, we like to have fun down there. I mean, you guys only get Dave. Um, they get me. and He's evil, according to Zoe. So, um, you know, that's good. Welcome to those that are joining us on the broadcast and those that are out in their cars and those that are on the patio. It's kind of cold. I'm not sure if anyone's out there. And of course, to you guys. Oh, I just heard them. That's pretty good. You guys are pretty good out there. And of course, to you guys. Like I said, oh, yeah. sorry, in a little fast. Um, and you know, at Hilltop, we are all about Jesus. Period. Yeah. That's right. So for those who don't know, my name is Kim. I'm Dave's better half. I am the one he always makes fun of. Um, and just so you know, for the record, he lies all the time, all the time. So don't believe a word he says at all. Okay, maybe a little bit, but about me, don't. But I do get to teach our kids and our youth here at Hilltop, and it is a job that I absolutely adore and love. Um, if you have not checked out our Hilltop kids or Hilltop students, and you want a place to have fun and to serve, please talk to me because we are always looking for people. And it could be any, any different, we have all different kinds of jobs you could do outside of being with them, if maybe you don't like them, or maybe. But if you love them and you want some energy, come and see me because they're going to give it to you. But I have a question to ask you. Does 936 sound like a big number? Kind of. I guess it depends on what you were talking about. Now, I do teach kids, so I do like interaction. So to make sure they understand points, I make them repeat it to me. Um, so everybody repeat 936. Oh, that was not loud enough. Again, I teach children. So everybody say it just, you know, like 12 octaves higher, but not in that whiny girl screaming voice, because that's really loud. Say 936. 936. Good job. You get, you get a gold star. If I had prizes, you'd get it. All right, 936. It can be a big number or it could be a small number. So let's kind of break it down. I looked up online, if you know me, Julie can attest, I love to internet shop. Um, I have way more Amazon boxes than needed, but that's okay, that's a different sermon. I looked up online some things that are cost about $936. So we'll see if we think as a group if they're collectively worth it. You know, if you're on the broadcast, feel free to play along. Put a little hand up if you're going to think you're going to buy these items. So let's see, I found a pair of Dyson. First of all, I thought Dyson was only vacuums. I learned something. A Dyson Zone air purifying headphones. I didn't know you needed air purifying for headphones, but I'm learning. For about $936. So as a show of hands, who would be buying $936 air purifying headphones? Any takers? No. Oh, I got one. Austin, put it on your Christmas list. All right. I got another one for you. For you pool... <laughs> no problem, I'm there to help. For you pool owners, a pretty cool electric underwater scooter. How... Oh, so I got some hands. Who's going to spend a little over $936 on an electric scooter? It goes underwater. It goes underwater. All right, now, this one, some of you actually may take it up because depending on where you summer birds are at, it's an electronic mosquito trap for $950. Any takers? Any takers? No. Yeah, no. That's why I said, I mean, here it's not really. Now, if you want links to these purchases, let me know. I can hook you up after church. But let's flip it over. How many of us would be excited if we made $936 at a garage sale? Yep, I'd be all about that. How about if we got a $936 gas card for our gasoline. Okay? So we got so we're doing good for this one. What about if we got $936 off our monthly bills? 
Yeah. So it kind of makes us, what was that number again? Good job. So it kind of has a different ring if what we're looking at, right? Well, I have a better investment than all that for 936. You see, when a child is born until a child turns 18, we have 936 weeks with our child. Yeah. We have 18 birthdays to spend with our child. We have 18 spring breaks to spend with our child, 18 Christmases, 18 short but sweet summer vacations. Now, don't be sad, because it's not a sad thing. It's really not. Because if we don't actually ever stop and count that time, we don't make that time count. Now, some of you are going, my kids are way past 18, I don't have kids. But you know what? It fits all of our lives, whether we have children or not. We all have a limited amount of time of what we have and when we have it. Now, I'm a visual learner, so my lovely assistant is going to help me out here. <laughs> See, I put them to work. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> he is quite lovely. Thank you. So in this jug is 936 marbles. Wow, I know. Wow. But now some of you are like, I'm only 18 years away from retirement. That's an awesome looking ball right there, right? So that's why I said it's not a bad thing because we want to make our time count. And then this one right here, this is one year, 52 marbles. This is how many weeks we get. I know, close your mouth. And this one is one. One week, yes, Austin, one week. It's one. Now we're going to come back to this one. This is actually my favorite one right there. But again, though, if we don't take the time to count and keep a count, we're not going to make our time count. And I want to tell you that if you do not have children at home, if you don't have children, you still have a huge impact on the kids around you. Kids, teenagers, whether you're a parent, whether you're a grandparent, you're an aunt, you're an uncle, you, have a make, you make a major difference. Maybe you're a coach. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're just a friend. You have the ability to impact and make it count with the time you have with them. Better yet, maybe you're a volunteer for Hilltop Kids or Hilltop Students where you can make a major impact. So please hear me that every one of us in this room can make an impact on kids. But we need to remember our time is limited. Our time is limited. So to make it count, we need to keep counting. Now, Jesus even tells us this because in Psalms chapter 90, verse 12, and downstairs I'd say, A, because it's just the first part. It says, teach us to number our days. Jesus even told us, keep a count. Our days are numbered. Our time is numbered. Now, again, I teach kids, so we like to keep us fresh and laughing, and you all look a little sad about our numbered days. So we are going to play a little race. Up on the screen is going to show three marbles, blue, red, and green. You get to pick which marble you want to win the race. The louder you scream for your marble, that's how the winner is won. So you have to pick your marble and then pick your color. Well, that's kind of the same thing. And yell loud for them. Also, to get us started, we all have to yell, one, two, three, hit it, Miss Julie. I told you, we're interacting today. OK, ready? One, two, three, hit it, Miss Julie. And 
just like that, blue one again. Yeah. Sorry, George. <laughs> I noticed George didn't cheer for blue. All right, to make it count, we need to set goals. If we want to make this count, this time we have, if you want to make the time you have for your retirement, if you want to make the time you have for however long we have to live, we need to set goals. And Jesus tells us in Psalms chapter 20, verse 4, May he grant your heart's desire and make all your plans succeed. He wants to give us our desires. We need to set goals to make those desires. Think about it. Now, I'm not an archery person, but if you're shooting a bow and arrow, if you're sh not looking at the, at the bullseye, but you're looking at multiple bullseyes, are you going to hit the bullseye? No. Right, Austin? No, you're not going to. And it is the same with our families, in our relationships, in our life. If we don't set goals, we're never going to hit them. And we have to be clear about what our goals are. It's important. When Dave and I were first married, really even before we were married, we talked about what kind of family we want to have, what was important to us, how we wanted to raise our kids, how we wanted our relationships to be. It was amazing to me as a young wife of here I'm walking, you know, we're in seminary, he's going to be a pastor and looking around and unfortunately most pastors have terrible relationships with their families. But when he came home one day and he said, it'll always be God, you, my kids, and then the church. That's a goal. It's a goal. It's important to hear. So you've got to set clear goals, right? So those goals are going to be different for every family. We have a youth girl here at Hilltop who uh, told us the other night that her family sits down for dinner at the exact same time at the table every day to eat dinner together. That's a goal. It would never work in the Jackson household, <laughs> ever. They get food. That's about it. No, I'm just kidding. But that's what works for their family. And so that's a goal that they have set as a family that they're going to do. That's pretty cool. It's a clear set goal. We were recently talking to a mom here at Hilltop and to truth be known, we were kind of giving her a hard time because we found out she played Pokemon Go. <laughs> if you don't know what Pokemon Go is, find someone younger than you, ask them, they'll explain it. But it's a game. And so we were kind of giving her a hard time, like you play Pokemon Go kind of making fun of her a little bit. And then she kind of slapped us all in the face because she said, if my kids play Pokemon Go and that's how I can be with my kids, I'll play Pokemon Go every day. Yep, exactly. She had a clear goal that she wanted to spend with her kids and didn't even need to say it because her actions already did. Her kids' time was a goal. So she made a point to do it. If we don't set goals, we will not make it count. Because before we know it, all of a sudden we're left with this. We no longer are left with 936. And we're like, oh, cred, it's their senior year. We got to pack all this stuff into it. Not going to happen, right? And now, for our family, our goal was to have fun. Well, one of them was to have fun. And so we like to laugh, pick on each other. But the one thing that we do all the time is when we take family pictures, we always make silly faces because isn't that fun? So we're going to practice with you guys. Alyssa, will you bring me my phone? Yeah. We are taking a picture. But I need you all to stick out your tongue or something silly, okay? Make a silly face. You ready? One, two, three. Good job. Good job. You would, you would fit into the Jackson household. Because that's an important fact, important goal in our family is to laugh and have fun. We want to make it count. So we have to set goals. And sometimes you have to readjust your goals. Sometimes you have to go... I'm not sure if that's working. I need to figure that out. Because if we never look back at our goals, it's kind of like shooting at a bow and arrow, shoot a bow and arrow with your eyes closed. You're not going to hit it, right? Because we need to make it count. We need to 
make goals and make it count with our kids. Let me read for you in Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 and 24. Then Jesus got into the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly, a fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. He was sleeping. Did you ever stop and wonder if Jesus got tired? He got worn out. He got tired. Anyone in here ever get tired? <laughs> Anyone in here have a family that sometimes you're just way too overscheduled and your family is just tired and cranky? <laughs> right? It's normal, isn't it? It's a normal thing to make it count, to make our time count. And again, this is not just for parents because this is a life for all of us is we need to budget our activities. Julie told me a couple weeks ago that she's on an activity diet because she said it's time to cut things out. And that's so true. We need to budget our activity. Now, if you're anything like me, this is a lot harder to, than it is to actually, harder to do it than to say it, right? Because we're busy. Our lives are busy. Our kids' lives are busy. Our spouses' lives are busy. Our friends' lives are busy. Our, got mail. Uh, everybody's lives are really busy, right? And who wants to say no to good things? Not me. Not me. So how do we do that? How do we actually budget our activities? Okay. First, we have to ask ourselves hard questions. And we're going to get to those questions in a second. But the second thing we have to do is say no. So everybody practice with me. On the count of three, we're all going to say no. One, two, three. No. Oh, that wasn't good enough. Got to be more. No. One, two, three. No. Good job. And no is a complete sentence. Did you know that? It's a complete sentence. So it is okay to say no. And the hard question you need to ask is, does this activity, does it help or does it hurt my family? Because even a good activity can help or hurt us or our families. Too often we don't ask those questions. And instead we say, mm, but do I really want to do this? Does my kid really, really want to do this? I don't want to say no. Or, oh, will it really hurt if we overextend ourselves in this season? My guess is if, you over, if we overextend ourselves in this season, we're going to do it next season too. And the next season, and now it's norm. Because we haven't budgeted our activities. Now again, how many, how, what's the number for this? So we have limited time, don't we? We need to be cautious. We need to use our time wisely. We need to make it count. So here are some things we need to look at. We need to look at two major questions. Is, is that activity, is it really something we show a genuine interest in or a love for? Because if not, cut it out. What do you got to say? No, that's right. No, just say no. You thought that was for drugs. No, it's for activities. <laughs> just say no. Are you having to force your child to get out of the car to go to that sport? Guess what? They don't love it. Say no. Do you come back from an activity and all we want to do is complain and nag about what it was? Just say no. It's not what we like. And the second question I think we need to ask ourselves is, does that activity actually boost our self-confidence? Does it help us learn self-discipline? Again, if it's hurting our kids, if it's hurting us, we need to just say, no. good job, good job. Now remember, just like our goals, everybody's budget is different. For some people, they may be able to be involved in 12 sports and 15 clubs and be successful. And then for some people, 
one, one sport is borderlining too much for them. So everybody is different. So just like our money is different and our budgets are different, so is our budgeting our activities. But be mindful of that. But if you think about it, if we set our goals to a certain thing, that will fall down into our activity budget as well because they're going to go together. Now, what was this number again? Good, just making sure. All right. You've been, you've been doing really well, but it's time for another race. So on the count of three, we have to yell, hit it, Miss Julie. One, two, three. Hit it, Miss Julie. All right. cheered for green. Way to go. Here's the thing. We can set all the goals we want. We can budget our activities all we want. But if we miss this point, we're truly not making it count for our kids and for the, our relationships and for the people around us. Is that to make it count, we have to choose Jesus. We have to choose Jesus. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, this is what it says. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you're on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your foreheads as a reminder. Write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Listen, the number one thing we can do for our kids and for the people we deal with every day is to teach them that they want to make their lives all about Jesus. Period. That's right. All about Jesus, period. Make it about him. Get your kids to church. Get your grandkids to church. Get your friends to church. Your nieces, your nephews. Whoever it is, get them to church. Make your time, count with them. Get them to church. Get them to read their Bibles. Offer to read it with them. Text them a Bible, Bible verse every day or every couple days. Get it in their head. But as a church, we need to do something. We need to make sure we're having quality programs for our Hilltop students and for our Hilltop kids. We need to make sure we're giving them the best thing possible, Jesus. We need to give them a safe place to come. We need to give them a safe place to bring their friends because their, their world needs to be wrapped around Jesus. You guys need to come alongside those teenagers and those kids and support them. One of the five reasons a, te a teenager stays in church after the age of 18 is having supportive adults outside of their parents that they can go to. You can be those people. You can be those people. You know, but we also need our relationship with Jesus to be strong. Because we can do this all we want. But if our actions don't show it, nobody's looking. So we need that. We need to be in connection groups. We need to make church a priority. For moms and dads, we're going to have a connection group coming up in January, February. That's all about putting Jesus first in your marriage and living that to then that filter down for your kids. Make sure you look for that group. Sign up. Make an investment. 936. But here's the thing, moms and dads. When they leave, it's just you two. And hopefully you have a lot more than 936 years left because your marriage means more. Spend that time together. Invest in it. Make goals. Budget your activities. It's important to choose Jesus. We want every kid and every teenager that comes into Hilltop to leave Hilltop going, it's all about Jesus, period. Now here's the thing. I'm going to get on my soapbox in a second, probably get a little emotional, so I apologize. 
I want to talk to you about the one. One shot. One shot. This is what Hilltop gets with a lot of kids and a lot of teenagers. One shot. I urge you to join the party. Help us make a building that's big enough for us to fit in for kids. Help us make a difference in the life of kids. We can't do it without you. One shot. One shot is what we get. And we have got to do it on the best. We need a building, a room that can fit kids. We need a building that kids can separate into age groups so that we can teach kids on their level. We want to bring Hilltop kids to a whole nother level, but we can't do it without you. So I urge you, as much as this is an eye opener, this is more. One shot, that's what we get. That's what Hilltop gets many times. And we want to do it to our potential so that every teenager and every kid walks out of Hilltop knowing it is all about Jesus, period. And a few, a few minutes, we're going to go ahead and do our child dedication. So if you are, need to grab your kid or if you're a part of that, you can meet over at Dave. But we are going to have our child dedication. These are parents who have committed to say, I want to raise my child up in the church. I want to make my child's life mimic. It's all about Jesus, period. And some people have signed up for it. Some people haven't. If you're sitting here and you're like, I want to do it, feel free to come up by Dave and we'll get you signed up for that as well to come and be a part of it. But as they're coming up, will you pray with me? Jesus, you are amazing. And I thank you for that one shot we get with kids. Lord, I just ask you to help us make it count. Help us make clear goals in our families and our relationships. Help us to budget our activities so we can give to you fully. But Lord, help us choose you. Help us make you a priority in our life and in our church and in the lives of the kids and teenagers in this church, Lord. We love you, Lord. In your precious name, amen.